Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, today I'm talking about um, teaching in the private sector, right? So the, the workshop is about something very simple and it's literally how do you do your job, right? Because the kind of doing your lessons every day is relentless, plus you have all these other responsibilities. So in order to kind of experiment or do the things that you want to do, you need to have the core of your teaching take up as little time in terms of planning as possible. Uh, and in that way you can claw back some time to use on the things that you're interested in or the things you want to experiment <coughs> with. So usually uh, I plan all of my lessons according to a simple structure. We have an introduction activity we have uh, activity one, which is short activity, uh, usually it's scaffolding activity two. And what it's scaffolding is either the vocabulary, the grammatical structures, or sometimes the concepts that we're going to use in the second activity. Activity two is usually a communicative activity. And usually we're targeting one of the skills from the new course of study. Uh, with this activity and um, over the course of a module these skills they kind of they build on each other so that we go from something quite simple to something quite sophisticated at the end and then we have a uh, recording and personalization phase um, and we use a passport for that uh, passport is just this little booklet and all you do is record the basic information from the lesson the date, the lesson name, uh, the target phrase, an example of the target phrase, uh, new words, words that I, I want you to use, uh, and comment. So the comment is interesting, that's open. Um, usually we advise the students to comment on how easily they can use the target and if they feel that I can't use the target, that's somewhere where they can tell us, we need more explanation, we need more examples. Um, you can ask for the help that you need. So, some students have started rating my lessons in the comments section, <laughs> and I get a score for oral communication from a couple of students. And it's quite interesting. Um, a lot of the things that we've experimented this year have not scored highly, uh, because they're not as slick as the things we're repeating from last year. So that's been very interesting and sometimes has hurt my feelings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, what I want to do today is rather than kind of talk at you, uh, we're going to do a module of lessons that I did this year with oral communication to students. So the basic structure that I use is introduction, activity one, activity two and passport. What I do is I take a theme from the textbook, one of our units, and I'll do three lessons on that theme. I'll try to do three, three themes in the space between the start of a semester and the midterm, or from the midterm to the end of term test. So we get five modules over an academic year. Um, so that's three themes in a module with uh, an examination at the end of it. So you're looking at kind of 10 to 12 lessons in a module. So OC2 was twice weekly. So that's a really large amount of content to generate over a year. So that's why having a standard format is really useful. So let's start. So we need a class representative. So who's going to volunteer? Thank you very much. Do, do you know Gore? You know yes. how to do Gore? So um, I'm very keen on, on discipline. There's a lot of other things that go into the teaching that unfortunately we don't have time for. Um, but I suggest that you are an absolute tyrant with discipline. It's the way to go. So uh, Brad, will you be my team teaching partner? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our, our first lesson with our passports. But, um, okay. Okay, so let's, let's begin. So, uh, Alison, can we do Gore? 
Okay, that's, that's quite good. That's quite good. But let's try again. Let me show you. So please sit down. So when we do got it, so Alison, can you talk? We should stand up, put our chairs under our desk, stand behind our chairs, check our uniforms. Boys, your ties should be correct. Girls, your blazers should be buttoned. Is that okay? Yes. So, Mr. Roland, what should I do with my tie? You should straighten your tie. Yes, Ms. Inamura, what should I do with my blazer? Uh, button. Okay, very good. So let's try one more time. Let's try together. Let's begin. Yosuke. Yay. Very Very nice. Please sit down. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Siemens. Good morning. Um, what was today's uh, conversation? Can you remember? Oh, today's is the introduction to... The introduction, okay. Can you remember how it starts? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, how was your spring vacation? Oh, that's right. Spring vacation, spring vacation was great. Uh, I went on a trip. Oh, you said you went on a trip. Mm. Where did you go? Uh, I went to Chichibu to go rafting in Chichibu. Mm. What did what did you do? Oh, I, I I just stayed in school and graded papers. Oh, really? You <laughs> said that you graded papers. Uh, what was the highest grade that you get? Oh, uh, seventy three. Seventy three. Oh, is that is that good? This class. This class. Oh, well done. Who, yeah. who was it? <laughs> okay, so Mr. Siemens, can you give everybody a passport? Please? Of course. Okay, so this is your passport, so please put your student number, your first name, and your surname. So that's interesting. So, Mr. Warden, what is my first name? John. John, very good. Mr. Shannon, what is my surname? Irish. <laughs> oh, almost, almost. That's an adjective. You are describing my name. How do we say adjective in Japanese, Mr. Shannon? Kayoshi. Kayoshi. So how do we say noun? Uh, what would be my name? Uh, uh, oh, is that right? No, it would be a, a, a meishi. A meishi. So let's try one more time. How about my name? What would it be? Meishi. Very good. Thank you. Okay. So let's let's put these. Okay, so do you have your pencil? Can you show me your pencil? Okay, so every day, every day we need a pencil. We need a dictionary. Who has a dictionary? Okay, and we need a notebook. Who has a notebook? Okay, so every day, what do we need, Mr. Harada? We need a dictionary, notebook, and a pencil. Very nice. Okay, so please write your student number, your name, and your surname. You have 30 seconds. Ready? Go. 9, 28, 27, 26. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Yeah. Although I suggest you go for number one. <laughs> Is it random? Okay. Are you? Yeah. That's great. Okay, let's let's stop there. Uh, so, usually in OC2 class, we do introduction, activity, activity, passport. But today, I want to talk about your passport. So, this is your passport. Every day, every day, we have to do our passport because we think this is very important. So every day, we need to write the lesson and the date. Every day, we need to write the new words that we learn in class. For example, adjective, noun, pronoun. Every day we will have a target and an example. And every day you will give a comment. So, every day I will give you a grade for your passport out of 10. If you forget the lesson, 
or the date, that's minus one point. If you forget your words, that's minus one point. So, please write the words, even if you know them. Even if you know them, please write them, okay? And the target and example are really important. So, if you forget, it is minus five points. And spelling and grammar for words, target, and example are very important. If you make a mistake, then it's minus one point, okay? Your comment is your idea, so spelling and grammar is not so important. So please try to write in English, okay? okay. If you need help, you can write in Japanese and ask us, okay? Okay, so let's write our, let's write our passport for today. You have one minute. Ready, go. Any words would be okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. What for new words? No, you have to oh, write the words. Yeah, that's a good question. So we would, mm -hmm. I would usually have specific words that I want the students to remember as part of my lesson plan, and uh, they would go here. Although students could record other new words if they wanted to, yeah. and some students do. But I want to have a group of words that everybody knows, so I can test them. On. Well, we would put the word adjective, noun, and pronoun. Am I doing what you're teaching assistant does? Uh, basically, by yeah. studying that. Yeah, that's what I can do. Are you actually at the front of the class instead of the back of the class? So that's an improvement. Okay, let's stop there. So, uh, Mr. Siemens. Yes, sir. Do you like sports? No, I don't. You don't like sports? Oh, really? Who likes sports? Okay, so Mr. Rowland. Yes. Do you like baseball? I love baseball. <gasps> you like baseball. So, who is a famous baseball player? Mark. <coughs> Mark. What number does he have? Health. <laughs> Five. Eight. Eight. Eighteen. Is, is, is that famous? Eight? Eighteen. Eighteen. Is he the first person to have number eighteen? Yes. Yes. <laughs> really? No. 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 Maybe not. Right. Maybe not, yeah. <laughs> so, what is your what is your student number? My student number is three four nine. Three four nine. Wow, that's a big number. <laughs> so, last year another student had your number, oh, really? right? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. So I have a letter from your senpai about OC two class. And your senpai will give you some advice. Wow. So this is a letter from your senpai. On oh my box. <laughs> so please have a look. So these are letters written by my third graders to my second graders. Um, students will receive these letters on the first day of class. And... Um, each of these letters is different. Each of these letters was actually written by a different student. So, this is one that I particularly like from uh, a student who's actually, this is not a criticism, I think. He's actually on the autism spectrum, the student. But if you read this, it's really, really good advice. So, hi, how are you doing? I'm very happy to welcome you to 3B. I hope you enjoy your third grade in high school. I would like to give you some advice in order to make good use of your final year of Chibokoka Sai. First, you would better study all subjects hard because you can learn a lot of things and knowledge. For example, there are globalization, foreign languages and sciences. That's important because you find something for your life. So please study everything intently. And he's a very intense young man. <laughs> Second, you had better play sports and instruments because you can have a break by them with your exam studies. For example, there are football, tennis, piano and guitar. That's important because you improve the efficiency of your studies. So please play sports and instruments sometimes. So that's our adverb of frequency there. I believe that you can do them. I look forward to seeing you again. Isn't that a nice letter? Isn't that nice? Wonderful. Huh? He's a good lad, I can do like it. She's, she's saying we better have the experience of love. <laughs> which, which, does it have a name on it? No. No, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we have just numbers writing to numbers. Um, 
Yes. Did you give them a format? Um, no, uh, but I give, we, we've spent so much time on structures and stuff like that that uh, he's basically following the structure I would have given him if I'd given him a structure. Okay. Um, we, I, we wanted to have it more open for them because uh, we can never have as many good ideas as the students have, and they'll always come up with something that you think, I wish I'd done that, you know. Um, so, let's move on to our, our next lesson. So, Miss, Miss Inamura, please. Can we start with Gode, please? So, very good. Thank you, Mr. Rowland. And girls, make sure our braces are done. Nice Nice Okay, please sit down. Okay, next. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, please listen and please look at me, okay? So, please listen to our conversation. Please listen to our conversation and then we will ask you some questions, okay? Okay. Okay, so. Mr. John, hi. Uh, do you like to study? Oh, I do like to study. Um, how about you? Uh, I like to study, but it's hard for me to study. Really? Why? Why is it hard um, for me to study? Well, I don't want to sit down for a long time. I like to move around. Oh, okay. Um, I like to listen to music when I study. Oh, really? I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. It, it, it doesn't help me very much. It doesn't help me do very you, much. Do you listen to music when you study? Sometimes. sometimes. She does it sometimes. Sometimes? But I don't like listening okay. to music. So, who likes to listen to music when they study? Who doesn't like to listen to music when you study? Oh, okay. So, Mr. Tyson, you like listening to music. What's your favorite music? Um, I like some good old rock and roll. You like rock and roll? Oh, okay. I'm studying. Very good. Keeps me motivated. Keeps you motivated. Good. Okay. Um, who like, do you like to study with friends? Um, I don't really have friends, but right. I do. I do like you do. Study. You would if, if you had some if friends. I had friends. You study with them. Who wants to be Mr. Seaman's friend? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our introduce phase. So what we want to do, and this is a technique that I've stolen from Mr. Seaman's. We want to go from a conversation between teachers to students having a conversation. <coughs> so the pattern is introduce, engage, and involve. So the engage would be the questions to one student and the involve would be the raising the hands, yes or no. And this really helps because students come to class with the expectation that they have to be active from the start of class. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so next let's do our passports. You have one minute. That's okay. Okay, so let's let's stop there. Yes, but eventually you, you'll be like, uh, because you know you only get a minute to do it. So okay, um, Miss Inamura, can we start with Gore? Okay, maybe. Okay. Very good. Very good. Just get there. Okay, please sit down. <laughs> There's no kneeling though. <laughs> well, not in class. <laughs> okay, so, uh, hi Mr. Siemens. Hello. How was your weekend? Ah, uh, it was, it was alright, it was not bad. It was alright? What did yeah. you do? Ah, uh, I just 
you know, I went to, to watch a soccer game. Oh, you went to Dame, a soccer Dame, game? Did you see the soccer game? No. It was pretty good. It was good? Yeah. Okay. So you said you went to a soccer game. Who yeah. was playing? Uh, it was the Urawa Reds and the uh, Sapporo Blues. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have two teams in Saitama City, uh, Urawa Reds and Omiya Ardija. So who thinks Urawa Reds is the best? Who thinks Omiya Ardija is the best? I would agree with you because Urawa Reds is just a bandwagon team. <laughs> What about you? What did you do? Uh, I went. I went hiking. Oh really? Mm. How was it? It was pretty good. Um, I wanted to see fireflies. You said you wanted to see fireflies. Yeah. Did you see fireflies? No, I didn't see any fireflies. I have never seen fireflies. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty sad, right? Well, you should go inside. Well, in in Japan, oh. you can usually see fireflies. Oh, um, really? During, during the year sometimes. Does anyone know when you can see fireflies in Japan? Summer. 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 How about dragonflies? Every summer. What? We sometimes see dragonflies in Ireland. <clears throat> I don't know. Japan sometimes? Always? Oh, I always see fireflies. Always? Always see fireflies? Yeah. Dragonflies. Okay. Usually, usually. Okay, so... Almost never. So this would be an example of activity one, right? So what we want to scaffold here is adge uh, adjectives of frequency, right? So, okay, everybody. Adverbs of frequency, sorry. So everybody, please take out your notebook. Do you have your notebook? Yes. Yes. Okay, so... Please draw a line in your notebook. And please put the adverbs of frequency on the line. Can you put one idea on the board? Can you put one idea on the board? Are those my markers? Can you put one no. idea on the board? No, those are your Can you put one idea on the board? Ready? I have the same yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so your other idea was okay. We want an adverb of frequency. <coughs> okay. So please put your idea on the line. Please put your idea on the line. Can I, can I use one of yours? You can, yeah. Oh, that doesn't work. That's crazy. Okay. But that would be a good definition, right? Very good, thank you. I take your hand. Thank you. Can I have Yes, of course. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so let's write our let's write our our passport. And Alison's idea was really good. So she said always, and always means all the time. So please make a note of Alison's definition. You have one minute. Well, you, your job usually would be discipline. discipline. That's discipline. why I'm sending him yeah, to the yeah. door. He is, he is a troublemaker. We'll send him to Mr. Sato later. <laughs> <laughs> there should be no drinking in class. <sighs> It also means that you don't have to stretch as much to hit the student. <laughs> you can get that talk, <laughs> talk in there. Yes. Yes. Question about, yes. about um, sorry, no, you, yes. about no, 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 about no, no, uh, words no, 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 on the board. Yes. So you had you had the, the adverbs of frequency up where you had words that you expect those to write down before. Um, so is yes. It, so do you have words? So you show this to the students and they write down those words in addition to whatever well, written on the board. Well, 
in our presentation, we, we've got a slideshow, but usually the, the plan for the whiteboard that I have, you would have this area of the whiteboard as, as we went would collect all of these words. And then at the end of the, of the lesson, I would simply do this. And this is now in, you know, these words would now be in that right. space. So right now, the what we're writing, this actual writing, is your end of the lesson. Aspect. That's right, yes. It's the personalization. I wasn't sure if that time was reserved just for the comment, or whether it's... Usually students would have four or five minutes to do their passport. I see. And, it, and they would be expected to record everything and write a comment I see. in that time. And I don't give students their passports until the end of the lesson okay. to stop them from kind of filling it in as we go along. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, cool. But that means that I have to have a passport for each class in my pocket because I need to record exactly what they're recording, right. which mm -hmm. I have certain words that are in my plan, in my lesson plan, but other words that will come up as we go along, like Addison's yeah. definition. And next time, I'll add the word definition to the passport, and then we'll, we'll ask, we would ask something like, uh, please look in your passport, uh, what does always mean? means all the time, so that's definition. How do we say definition in Japanese? And I would add that. One of the secondary goals is to give the students the technical language they need to talk about language. Because I don't want to have to go through a whole rigmarole with the student. I want to be able to say, that's singular, it should be plural. And the student go, oh, okay. Um, that's a goal, but it takes a long time to get there. But if we do it holistically, if we add it in all the time, we will get there eventually. So just, just to clarify, yeah. sorry to jump in again. No, no. So you say that you, you go back and you, you add definition. Would you then be adding a word to a previous passport entry? Or would that be included in, in the... It would be passport? included in the new one. In the new one. In the new, yeah. In the but you would draw attention back to the previous entry. Yeah. Say, have a look. And then that's what this means. Yeah. And, oh, and probably what I would do as well is because I'm always using this pattern, I would change my lesson plan. And I would change activity one. And instead of doing whatever we plan to do, we might do an activity based around making definitions. I see. And then I would also just add definition into my introduction. Okay. And then it would be added into the passport. Cool. So that's the benefit of having a structure like this. Okay. Because that would be impossible to do if I was sitting down just planning every lesson right. uh, the hour before I was due to do it, which some of my colleagues do. <laughs> okay, so... Um, that was the, so learning styles was one theme. So the next theme is Korean. So we're three lessons in this, our fourth lesson. Okay, so Miss Inamura, please. <laughs> please sit down. Okay, your onagai shimas is quite good. It's quite good. But you know it needs to be needs to be stronger, right? So that's not CK spirit, is it? So let's try one more time. This is more please. Oh dear, no, sorry. We we can't we can't go. Oh. Remember what Mr. Sato said about how we talk to each other. Is that okay? Okay. So to the table. Yeah, you, you, is that hot enough to just? So I will talk to your homeroom teacher, okay? okay? Let's try one more time. So listen to Mora, please. Much better, thank you. Oh, excellent, please sit down. Okay, so... <laughs> Hello, Mr. John. We, we'd spend the whole lesson doing it until we got it right. But well, because the alternative is that yeah. you yeah, okay. if you have discipline problems in April, they will be affecting your health by Christmas. Mm. Uh, it's it's true. You know? Why do you think I'm going bald? <laughs> Poor nutritional choices. Speaking of which, Mr. John, yes. do you like being a teacher? I do like being a teacher because then I can bully students like Miss Papko. <laughs> oh, that's true. But teachers always <laughs> go on school trips. 
Yes, yeah, that's true. Um, but we have to work on Saturdays, right? Well, that's, that's, that's true. That's true. But if you're a second grade teacher, if you're a second grade teacher, then you can go on homestay to Australia. That's pretty cool. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I guess so. Wouldn't yeah. you like to go to Australia for your job? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? If you could do that. Of yeah. course, it's true that you get to go to Australia, but yes. you have to go with the students. You do, yeah, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, how, how many yeah. of you are interested in hanging out in Australia with Mr. John? <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah. My work here is done. It's done, yeah. <laughs> and then out the window. <laughs> so, okay, please take out your notebooks. Please listen to the CD. Please guess. So, please guess which job. Let's see if this will work. <coughs> what job? What job is that? Of occurrences of data. That's what? Of what? From data. Like you look at a map right. and What's this? Supermarket. The cashier. The cashier, the cashier right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Ah, cook, chef, and football. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> oh, that would be a good one. We'll add that to the board. Oh, well done. Excellent. There has to be two because they're using the dictionaries and stuff. Oh, what's I that? Secretary. No, listen again. Thank you. So, can I show you? So, Mr. Siemens, can you walk? Can you walk across here? Okay, ready. What? Do you get it? You're taking. So, who who uses this? Paparazzi. Paparazzi. Oh, that's great. So, uh, what's another, what's another word for paparazzi? Photographer. Photographer. <laughs> so, what's the difference between a photographer and a paparazzi? Morals. One has <laughs> your permission. Moral adoption. Does that make, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, um, maybe we can hear the next one. So who, who's this? The teacher. Who's this? The teacher. <laughs> well, we had teachers, so it's not teacher. It's secretary. Secretary. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Because that's all my teacher used to me. Okay. So usually with that one we get uh, office lady. Mm -hmm. O L. So now we want to say okay. So it's office lady fire. Woman. Fighter. Yeah, man. We usually get police. Dude. Yeah, man. Guard, so guard man. one of our one of our targets here today is to introduce the idea of register through the idea of gendered language. Mm -hmm. And say to students, okay, we don't want to say office lady. That's not a very nice thing to say. Um, it's like fireman and policeman, we want to say office worker firefighter and police officer, right? Uh, okay, so 
Let's do our passport. You have one minute. Okay, let's move on. So with, with our, we have three themes. So we, we have this structure for our lessons. And then we have three themes. And what I usually like to do is the first theme will be based around discussion. The second theme will be based around presentation. And the third theme will be based around debate. And that's how we can use this structure all the time and not have it get boring. Um, especially if... The activity one, we do that in a variety of ways. So, craze number two. So, Miss Nomura, please. Okay. Let's get lit. Oh, yeah, yes. Very good. Please sit down. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Siemens, yeah. if you could be any job, if you could do any job, what job would you like to do? Um, if I could do any job, I would mm. like to be a tattoo artist. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool, right? don't you think? Right. Who, who has a great. tattoo? Danger. Nobody? Danger. Danger. Oh, Danger. I hate the school. Oh, that's true. That's true. Who secretly has a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Really? I'm surprised. Why? Well, if I was a tattoo artist, then... Everybody can see my work. Oh, that's true. How about you? Um, well, when I was a student, I wanted to be a doctor. But the study was too difficult, so I decided to be a teacher instead. Oh. Is there anyone here who wants to be a doctor? <laughs> you know, you're not going to make it. <laughs> 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 oh. Support. Okay, so next we have, we have uh, an activity. So let's do the activity with our friends. So three people, two people, two people, two people, two people. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you good points and bad points. Do you remember the jobs from last time? What were the jobs? Cashier. Yeah. Photographer. Office worker. Arc welder. Arc welder. Arc welder. Arc welder. Firefighter. And there was one. There was one that we missed, which would be. Okay. So, I'm going to give you good points and bad points. So, there should be a good point and a bad point for each job. You have one minute. Ready? Go. You can, you can like, you can. I should pull my scissors. Yeah, you can rip those out. Rip those out. Yeah, you can. Some of the lights. Some of the lights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that was really nice. And uh, yeah, it's kind of like a noble student, and uh, they, they were a lot of issues. I ran out of experience as well. Yeah, they're not probably just the students. Technically, they're not that dangerous. And uh, it's okay for them to have a lot of stuff. Jesus Christ, to have to have boyfriends and girlfriends. As long as they don't do any boyfriend and girlfriend stuff, it's a very uh, very so, 
we spent a lot of our time kind of these And they're expensive, I love the children. They're like holding hands and scooping them. They're quite a surprise. We went to one of my terminal girls. Wow. So that's all that's part of all the home stuff we have to do as well. Okay, so what do you think? So you have your idea, right? Your idea is okay, right? But this is my idea. And my ideas are secretly fact. So, what do you think? Have a high salary, get a discount. What do you think? Have a high salary, discount. So, yep. Yeah. So this is a good point and a bad point, right? So who is this? Uh, CEO. Yeah, that would be good. How, how about? So, I, oh, it's the other way around, isn't it? Sorry. It's, I'm thinking of the wrong, thinking of a different lesson. Okay, so if you're a... Uh, well, register, 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 register. Register. Right, so a clerk, right? Reggie. 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 And how about, I can't enjoy weekends and I... Yeah. Photographer? Photographer, maybe. That's a good that's a good idea. But how Bartender. about how about this? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, or or chef. chef. So yeah. see, your idea is okay, my idea is okay, right? So okay, let's do our passports. The Wants. Who's the Wants? Sorry? Who's my aunt? Hi. John, you, I think the Christine Tyler just fine now. Is it right? Yes. Because you have what time is this one? Um, there's, a, there's a few more, but we can just stop and we'll take everyone's time. Sorry. Okay, let's move on. So, Miss Inamura, please. Okay, please sit down. Okay. Okay, so please watch us. Oh, that's the wrong thing to put out Okay, so we won't. Yes. So this is the third lesson in our yeah. careers themes the final one so we want to do we want to do we want to do presentations <laughs> so you can see there for example I think tattoo artist is the best career for me because if I am a tattoo artist I can uh, show my work to everybody right for example in the onsen, people can see the tattoos that I've created. And then we have that communicative element, you said, is the best career. Because that's true, but I think tattoo artist is bad for me. Because um, if I drink too much and my hand is shaking, I can't do a good quality tattoo. Right? And then, for, exa uh, for example, you might think, Tattoo artist is bad because it has unfortunate connotations, but I don't think so because Japan is changing. So the two targets that we have there is the conditional, if, then, but also this phrase, you might think. I really like that phrase. That will be useful later on when we start to do debate and stuff like that. About my kid. So we would have our communicative... Um, Presentations which Ms. Inamura has shown us already. So the students would, would listen 
and they would record the name and career, and they would record a good point. So they're still having to listen after. And they have a rubric. Usually, my activity two in the previous one would have been something like creating a rubric that we're going to use. So that way, everyone understands uh, how their grades are calculated. And this would be our, this would be our passport. So very quickly, please fill in your passport. And if you notice, our adverb is being added. So, for example, our police officer always carries a gun. And if you remember, one of our, one of our goals for last time was to talk about register and gendered language which is why we've made sure to use one of our examples from last time. Okay, let's move on. So, the next three, th the next three themes. Um, next three lessons are debate lessons. And because I've done so much assessment with passports and notebooks and all of that stuff, and we've used the themes from our textbook. We've got some space to do what we want, so next we're going to do festivals. Okay, so... Mr. John? Yes? There's a festival coming up soon, yes. isn't there? There is, yeah. Wow. It's a... Uh, yes. What do you think? So, Mr. Halada, yeah. there, what's the festival in February? Uh, oh, set to book, yeah. How about a foreign festival? Foreign festival, Mardi Gras. Oh, Mardi Gras, that would be fun. <laughs> I wish we had Mardi Gras in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, is there any more festivals? What do you think? Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. Oh, Valentine's Day. Are, you, are you, who are you going to give Valentine's mm -hmm. chocolate to? It's a secret. Okay. Very good. So, in your notebook, <coughs> So, this is Valentine's Day. I must put VD on the board, which was very <laughs> unfortunate. Kids everywhere. So, what, what are the numbers? Months. They're months, right? You guys are clever. So, please write one festival for each month. What we would do next is we would do a pairs debate, which would be something like, I think Valentine's Day is the best because, and then an idea, and then the other person would say, you said... You said Valentine's Day is good because of chocolates, but I think that's wrong because it'll give, make me gain weight. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. So that will be a very simple debate that we could have. And then the second debate lesson, we would try and go up. So we're not, we're not saying that's true. That's true, but we're saying, now we're saying, but I don't think so. So now we're actually disagreeing. So a good way to do this and I suggest that you use this with your communicative presentations as well. You can restrict the vocabulary that we're using to make sure that everyone can <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so please, please watch, please watch us. So, hi, Brad. Hi. Um, I have monkey. Did you not get one? I have. I have wolf. Oh, okay. Do you do you want to swap? No, I okay. don't want to swap. Bye right, bye. Goodbye. Oh no, wait. Challenge. So I show good. Check the point. Ah. Okay, bye. So hi. I have monkey. I have octopus. Do you want to swap? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, here you are. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you. So if your friend wants to swap but you don't want to swap, 
they can say challenge and you have the jank in, okay? Okay. So please talk to three people. Okay, ready, go. Hi. Uh, uh, I have octopus. Uh, I have octopus. Uh, 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 I have octopus. Uh, I have octopus. Uh, 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 I have octopus. I have a shark. Okay, please sit down. Please sit down. I have bats. a Shark <laughs> okay, push it down. Okay, we'll 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 finish there. There's a bit more. Should we come down? So, if you remember our letter from last time, what we're trying to do as well is we're trying to support the other teachers in what they're doing so that everything's joined up, right? So if you look at our, our letter, you can see the structures that he's learned through mm. lessons like OC2. So he's got first, second, which after we do I think, when they do their writing, they use ordinals instead of I think. So this is, you had better, this is a target phrase from another lesson, and we've got this first, because, for example, that's important because, so. And we've built up to this structure over the course of several lessons and added these elements in one after another. And if you go back through his passport, you can see these kind of building on top of each other as we go. And what's nice as well is that we can see things like, I would like to give you some advice and in order to make good use of. And these are phrases that he's learned through his writing textbook in other classes. So we've given him a structure that he can combine with the content he's learning from other classes and really write something, you know, very sophisticated. Um, so uh, that's the end of, of, of part one. Oh God, that means there's a part two. Uh, okay, so. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we looked at this, this structure of introduction, activity one, activity two, passport, and then three of these is a theme, and then three themes plus an exam is a module. And that's the basic structure that I use to do my job, right? Um, also, a lot of the lessons, each theme will have a diary uh, where students have to write. So they're also writing using the structures that they've learned. And then in the exam, they'll be tested on the structures and the content separately. Um, so uh, the reason I do this is because I have homeroom responsibilities. Um, we're a business and I'm part of the international division. So there are kind of salaryman things that I have to do. I have uh, a lot of responsibilities for club. So there's a lot of things that I have to do. Um, the teaching is almost an also ran. Uh, for me. So if I want to experiment with my teaching, if there's things that I want to accomplish, then I have to claw that time back from other things. And um, using that structure um, helps me plan lessons efficiently and in a way that makes sense. And because we should always be planning to goals, it helps me to do that. Um, so we have the new course of study. So, the new course of study, uh, the targets are often skills. So, it's very difficult to teach a skill, right? So, what I tend to do is I tend to boil that skill down to a phrase or a structure. And then I fit that in to the consistent structure that I use in lessons in small incremental steps. And that's how I build towards these new course of study goals. So, for example, this is an objective from English Expression 1. 
so this is your first grade high school students, right? To develop students' abilities to evaluate facts, opinions, etc., from multiple perspectives and communicate through reasoning and a range of expression while fostering a positive attitude towards communication through the English language. Or, to put it another way, uh, you might think, but I don't think so because, plus adverb. Right? <coughs> so, like many things that I don't like doing, this is your job. It's your job. Um, your job is to do what you're told. So your job is to do this. So you have to just do it the best way you can. If you don't, then you become the kind of teacher that everyone hates. Right? And shame on you if you do that. Um, okay, so here are some problems that we have. So we all know teaching would be a great job if it wasn't for students. So, but the specific problems that we have with our students is that some students don't come to class. And they don't come to class because they have sad home lives. And we can't change that. The problem is that we need all of our students to pass our course with at least 30%. Because if they don't do that, then they can't graduate. Ultimately. And also, your boss will start asking questions. Why are students failing your course? Also, you need to maintain an average of about 65%. And this is a main indicator of your performance in jobs. So, your department head and the administration will start asking questions about your abilities if all of your students aren't passing and you don't have an average of 65%. So, your problem is that you need the lessons to be accessible enough that everyone will pass, but challenging enough that you won't have students getting 80 or 90, right? And that's a real problem. For me, that's the most difficult part of my job. Um, so, uh, the other, the, so the passports are great for that. Because if you don't come, if you only come to the lesson before the exam, I can go, right, that's what's on your exam. Make sure you know those things. And also for the students who don't work very hard in class or are not conscientious and don't do the homework and stuff like that, when they're panicking two days before the test, they have a reference that they can go to. They don't face this kind of Herculean task of going through their notebooks and trying to work out what I want. They've got the targets that we're testing them on. They have a an example of that target that they can be confident is grammatically correct because I grade it. And if there's a mistake, I correct it. If they're not in class for a lesson, I fill this in for them. Uh, so that helps me meet this challenge with students. Um, there it is. That's, that's the lesson. And when you have 10 of those, that's the course. So it's very simple. Um, with our colleagues, some of our colleagues are salespeople, we're a business, so uh, if your colleague is very good at selling the business, uh, for example, one of my colleagues goes out to other schools and he goes, okay, I can get your baseball and soccer kids into these universities, and he generates a lot of business for us by doing that. The consequence of that is that because he's so busy with that, uh, then he gets given team teaching classes. Right. So frequently he's not there, and the burden of that work falls on, on me. So I need a structure that I can use that will take a lot of the work out of planning for me, and something that when he comes to class, because the, the structure is consistently the same, he can come in and take part without having to try and work out what the hell's going on. Um, and the structure also helps us to support our colleagues in other in other classes. If one of my colleagues is having problems teaching, for example, um, say inanimate subject phrases, inanimate subject sentences, which are quite difficult, I can just make that the target for one of my lessons and help students recap that. Um, the administration, right? When, when my job was available, uh, I applied and a bunch of other people applied. One of the people 
of the um, applied for the job was the first choice for the job. And the reason that he was the first choice was because he'd been a manager with Nova, right? But he'd been a manager with Nova and he'd stayed until the end. And you can tell from his resume that date was the last day that Nova was a company. And the headmaster looked at that and he slapped the table and said, that's the guy. Right? Because the people who are making the hiring decisions, <laughs> what they value is not the quality of your lessons. What they value is reliability. Right? So you don't want to have a reputation in your school for patchy quality. <coughs> okay? And you need solid structure so you can keep the quality of your lessons up. You can have students consistently passing your course. You can maintain your grade average. And you can demonstrate your reliability to the administration. And why? Because they are the people that will point and say, OK, you get the tenure position. Um, so we were going to recap something, but we didn't. We didn't talk about it, so that's a mistake. Um, but there are three pillars, right? Three pillars to a private school business. And this is what you have to understand if you want to work in a private school and if you want to get a tenure position. Very, very simple. Pillar number one, recruitment. Get kids into school, right? And success with speech competition, debate competition, having a good reputation you know, for the quality of your lessons, draw students. So the first pillar of the business is recruitment. Second pillar of the business is success with clubs. Right? So that means speech competition, that means debate competition, that means writing competitions, subtitle competitions, all that stuff. So a lot of the targets that I use, all the phrases, uh, a lot of the skills that we target are designed to be transferable into things like debate competition into things like speech competition, into the writing, all that stuff, right? Um, you have to kind of recycle your material. And the third pillar of the business is get kids into good universities, right? Can't stress that enough. In, in practice, this will mean your students need to pass level 2 AK, right? They need to pass level 2 AK. They need to pass it by the midpoint of the second grade of high school. Because after that, it's too late. They're too busy with centre and stuff like that. Speaking of which, they also have to do well on centre tests. If they aspire to the universities with language programmes, places like KO or ICU, they're going to have to go into an interview and sell themselves. Uh, so they need help with that. Right? Um, so we have these three pillars recruitment, success with clubs. Um, <laughs> if you want to start a debate team, you can download this book from my website. Um, and university entrance. Those are the three pillars of a business. If you can demonstrate your value to the, to, to the business by contributing to these three things, uh, you will be hired permanently and you will get the A bonus and you will be, you will get the, the incremental, you know, uh, pay raises by age. When you get married, you'll get a jump in salary. When you have children, you get a jump in salary. It, essentially, it's the holy grail, right, of our industry is getting that tenured position. And that's how you do, do it. I haven't done it yet. Right, but that's the that's the project. And the moment I do, obviously, uh, I'm done. <laughs> so, um, for example, this is Aiken level three. Right. So my first grade, especially lower level classes, we want them to pass Aiken level three because we want to push them into pre two at least. Right. Usually these have five questions. Right. So the the question that they find the most difficult is question number five. And question number five will be something like, Mr. Rollins, yes. do you like visiting museums? Yes. Right. So this is crazy because no, museums are not on here. Right. 
So it's just, it's something completely new. So, do you like visiting museums? Yes. Please tell me more. So, we can use, and, oh, excuse me, we can use the pattern that we've learned in class. I think, but yeah, I mean, this could be anything, right? <laughs> So, please tell me more. Um, I think that uh, museums are wonderful for students because they give us a chance to see many famous culture. Uh, for example, uh, Raphael exhibit at the right. uh, Arena Museum now. So, I think that um, museums are very valuable for students. And this is really helpful because because they're using because they're using this structure, when they start using it, it gives them time to think. And you're only really slotting ideas into a structure that you've used so many times, it should be easy. And the thing is that if they do that, that's five points for that question. That's the maximum <coughs> points already. The reason that we're doing this is because there's a further three points available for like attitude to communication. So this is like a belt and braces approach. And we do it with the third grade because with pre-2 and with 2, um, you can recycle this and, and hit those five points every time. So the approach that we're using here, we're just doing things as practically and as efficiently as we possibly can. And because we're doing this, we can keep these plates spinning. Um, so my advice is very, very simple, right? So I'll just read it from here. Choose a simple structure and stick to it, right? Introduce the topic so that students have to listen actively. Have a short activity that scaffolds your longer second activity and try and have a variety of them. In your second activity, try and make it communicative. Try and base it around a phrase that, that represents a skill from the new course of study. And then recycle the work that students do through discussion, presentation, debate. Have a written component, like a diary. And then test them on the content that you've taught and the structures that you've taught and the concepts that you've taught in your written exam. And if you do that, very quickly, you'll have enough assessment done so that you can just do what you want with some class time. And this year, uh, with OC2 students, we've had enough time, we've done enough assessment that I could do full parliamentary, st uh, full academic style debate in class. And we just did eight lessons on critical thinking, right? So all of the assessment was, was finished so that we had the time to do that. Parliamentary debate didn't work very well. Critical thinking worked okay, but was a bit boring, I think. But because I was able to really give it the college try, I know exactly how we would do it next time. Uh, so I can go back to the boss and say, here are the things that we're doing that nobody else is doing. Here is the value that I represent to your business in terms of these three pillars. Where is my influence? Do you have a question? Yeah, John, I'm, I'm a general high school teacher. I have really three in high school. Will you be changing the grades or will you be teaching OC2 next year? Most likely? OC2 won't exist next year. Right, right. Um, so, um, and I don't know what I'll be teaching. Right. And when we have the meeting at the end of March, uh, I'll have salaryman stuff to do until the start of classes. So I won't really have time to sit down and plan out a whole syllabus. But if I use this structure, I can, I can pretty much plan my year in a couple of days. And then I'm done. Um, and I can be confident that this will, will contribute to what I'm trying to do with clubs, contribute to what my colleagues are doing in their classes, and ultimately get my, my feet under the table. Um, so that's it, and uh, all of the, the, the lesson plans and uh, materials 
All of the images and the sound files can all be downloaded from my website. They might be on the the Jout website as well. On your Jout, sorry, Saitama my Jout website as well. Um, and if you're interested in any of this stuff, please get in touch any time. No problem. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm sure we have at least one or two more questions out there. Don't be shy. Yes, please. Um, can you speak more to to, uh, to the notebook and the diary, like like the written part of your course? When do you include time for that, or how does that work? Um, usually, my blackboard would look something like this. So. Um, And I like to have this on, on the blackboard for those students who are not very conscientious. And as we're going along, I'll fill in what it should look like mm -hmm. as we're going. But the way I would do it, so for example, um, if we were doing the careers, like, like if we were doing with first graders, we'll be doing jobs. What will happen is we'll have our introduction. We'll have our introduction conversation. And then I might give the students uh, a set of vocabulary, eight jobs, because I ask them to bring a dictionary to every class. Because I ask them to do that, we should use it in every class. Otherwise, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm giving two messages, a spoken and an unspoken message. I'm saying it's important, yet I'm implying it's unimportant because we never use them. Right? So the students would then have these eight jobs. Mm -hmm. They would write the words in, right? Then we would, we would have a, a short practice of some kind, and they would record the structure that I wanted them to use. And then they would do their speaking activity, and then they would maybe record two or three examples. And then they would add the date, the lesson number, fill in their passport, mm -hmm. and we would be done. So your passport would give you the structure that we should be using and a grammatically correct example. And then in your notebook, you, you have the raw materials to then do your exam. So what we're doing is trying to get them to produce as much language as possible. Now, I don't have the time, I would like to, but I don't have the time to go in and grade. I, I can grade it to make sure that they've done everything that they were supposed to do, but I don't have time to correct their spelling and grammar, which is why it's so important to have at least one good example. Um, they're welcome to write stuff and come to me and have it checked and stuff like that, but I can't do that for their notebooks. But this gives me a 10 out of 10 assessment. This gives me a 10 out of 10 assessment every lesson. And if I add participation to that, and then I add a diary, uh, and then I add like a presentation or a debate grade, I've got lots and lots of assessments, so the students who do the most work will get the best grades, and the students who don't, they'll pass. Because even if this is full of errors, um, it's enough there to get that 30, more likely 40 or 50. But we do do a lot of uh, notebook stuff. In the diary? Is that, is the that diary is like a separate work? piece of paper that I'll give you as homework. Okay. And usually it will, it will ask you something like, for careers, it would say, please write 60 words uh, about your ideal career. Please write about good points. Please write about bad points. Please use an adverb with frequency. Please check your spelling and grammar. And that would be two points, two points, two points, two points, two points. And then you would get a grade for that. And you don't, you don't have time to go through and edit it? I do go through and do this. Do okay. um, but I, I do that once for one theme. So I only have to do that three times in a module. They need feedback on their written work. Um, so th that structure allows me to give them consistent feedback. It's as much as I can manage. Mm -hmm. and so, that's, so that fills in homework, essentially, for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm just glad you are fully aware of the importance of the interest in exams. Yeah. <laughs> it's... it's it's the most important thing. It is, it is at the private sector, yes. It is, yeah, yeah. because um, the customers are paying their money for that. Yeah. The expectation is that they will go to 
as good a university as they can. Now, what we know that maybe some of you don't know is that there's more than one route into a university, right? There's the recommendation route, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Where our headmaster can recommend students. So we build up a relationship with an institution, right? This kind of relationship, right? And the quid pro quo is that we will send them good quality students. And in return for that, they will give us a certain amount of places. So the big picture is that we're trying to get up the rankings and we're trying to get as many kids into as many good universities as possible. So the recommendation route is really useful, but if you give it to this student, you can't give it to this student. So we have to have enough students that can go the academic route, that we can kind of make up the numbers with the recommendation routes, but we don't want to spend that currency unless we have to. So, um, yeah, the, the, the kind of strategy that goes into university entrance is yeah. The sad thing about the private sector is, you know, the, sometimes administration, who is ignorant about the teaching English, tend to, yeah. you know, yeah. evaluate the teachers based on the superficial data, such as the average score of the center exam, the college yeah. test, you know, how many people yeah. have passed the AK. What, what I will say, though, is that our Aiken scores have gone up. Mm -hmm. uh, like, well, not the Aiken scores have gone up. The, the, the same amount of students, more or less, are passing the written part, because there's two parts, written part and interview mm -hmm. text. Mm -hmm. But once they've passed the written part, I can guarantee you that they're going to pass the, the interview part, yeah. because they, we, we, they have all of the skills that they need. So the students that are passing that part has gone up, and that's something that I can go to the administration to and uh, say, I've done this, so please turn a blind eye to all the CD players that I've broken. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, and the, the, the co your colleagues that get paid the most amount of money are those colleagues that are consistently getting students into the top oh. universities. And they're the homeroom teachers of the Tokushin classes, or they're the academic directors. Mm. And those people are getting huge bonuses. And you can do that if you can show that same value. Thank you. Well, you, 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 you're a nice guy, and that's why you don't get that money. Yeah. Right? Um, I am too nice. You're too, that, that literally is your problem. Yeah. But no, good for you. So that's five o'clock? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Are we okay? You're very good. Good. Okay. Are we okay? Let's get on the pump. Great. Let's do it. Thank you so much again. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.